Hello and welcome to What's New from BBC Africa. I'm Yvette. Here's what's new this week. The young refugees raising awareness of Cameroon's forgotten conflict through art. It made me feel as if I was putting on armor to help the conflict myself and to help all the children, not only of the African region, but all the children of the world facing conflict at home. From Bitcoin to blockchain, we break down what cryptocurrencies are all about. And... Hello, my name is Grace, I'm 15 years old, and this is my Abel Kuta. We go on a tour of the home of Fela Kuti and Fireboy DML. And welcome to BBC What's New. We love traveling around the continent, meeting you guys, and learning all about where you live. This week, we're lucky enough to discover the culture and colors of Abeokuta in southwest Nigeria, home to none other than Felakuti and Fireboy DML. Take it away, Grace. Hello, my name is Grace. I'm 15 years old, and this is my Abeokuta. Abeokuta, my city, was founded in 1830 by Chief Shodeke, a leader of the Egba refugees. Abeokuta means under the rock. It was named in reference to how the local people found solace under the Oluma rock during inter-tribal wars many, many years ago. The city of Abeokuta is popularly known for its indigenous Adire fabric. My city has a whole market the Itoku market dedicated to Adire fabric. Abeokuta is a place full of life and color. There are various landmarks in my city, prominent among which is the Oluma Rock. The rock has three levels of stairs leading to its top. This is also the St. Peter's Anglican Church, Ake. It was founded in 1843. It is the first church in Nigeria. Right here is the palace of the paramount ruler, Alake of Egbalad. It is called Afi Alake Tile Egba in our local dialect called Egba. Opposite the palace is the Centenary Hall, which was built in 1930 to mark Abeokuta's 100 years of existence at the time. Abeokuta became the capital of Ogun State in 1976. My city is proud to have produced notable individuals in virtually all walks of life. They include Chief Olusel Gorbasojo, former president of Nigeria and owner of the only presidential library in the country. Chief Mrs. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, first Nigerian woman to drive a car and mother of the renowned musician Fela Kuti. And Professor Wole Soinka, Nobel Prize winning author for the purpose of relaxation and entertainment. A trip to the Green Legacy Resort, OPL Cinema, and the Olumarok is your best bet. In Abeokuta, we are known for our favorite dish, Lafun and Ewedu soup, while a common staple enjoyed by tourists is our locally produced rice, or fada. Abeokuta people are socialists known for hospitality. My city is the hometown of popular artists like Fela and Nicola Kokuti, Kiss Daniel, Fireboy, amongst others. As an individual, I spend my spare time to have fun at the June 12th Cultural Center, Kuto, watching live dramas. This is a town of my city, Abel Kuta, where everybody is welcome to experience culture in its purest form. Hope to see you soon. Bye! Thank you, Grace. And if you want to explore all the beautiful cities around Africa like Abeokuta, you can find more videos like this one on our YouTube channel. Just go on youtube.com forward slash BBC What's New. And make sure you click subscribe to keep up to date with our latest stories.
next to Cameroon in West Africa, where a war in the English-speaking region of the country has disrupted the lives of hundreds of thousands of children. In South Africa, a group of Cameroonian refugees are hoping to raise awareness of the conflict through a photography exhibition. Yoreta spoke to some of the children who took part in the project. Their identities have been protected for their safety. As Cameroon enters the fifth year of civil war, refugees who escaped the conflict have curated Humans of the Forgotten War, a photo exhibition that raises awareness of their plight through art. For me, the exciting part was really just putting on the clothing and apparel because it made me feel as if I was putting on armor to help the conflict myself. And to help all the children, not only of the African region, but all the children of the world facing conflict at home. It's difficult for a human being to, to see what is happening in our country and keep quiet. Cameroon was a British territory, then a German colony that was divided after the First World War, with the English-speaking region placed under a French-speaking rule. Years of dissatisfaction at the two-system country sparked a teachers' and lawyers' strike in 2016 against the erosion of the English language and culture from classrooms. Security forces responded violently, leading communities to rise up against the Francophone government. Five years later, thousands are missing and millions have fled what has been called a forgotten war. We don't have a family home. It was destroyed by the military. We were in the village and suddenly we heard gunshots. My father took us to the bull shelter for safety. The next day, when the military came in and started beating the civilians, my father was one of them. My mother now took us from our village. I miss my friends and I also miss my grandmother. You are not supposed to talk. You don't have an opinion. They will catch you up. They will lock you. This photo shoot took place on Constitution Hill, a symbolic prison site in the city of Johannesburg, South Africa, to represent not only the thousands of Cameroonians imprisoned since the start of this war, but more so the power of forgiveness. The outfits we are wearing are the Menda traditional clothing, so the colours were green, yellow and red representing the Cameroon flag. And we use the South African colours as a backdrop to show you that when communities help each other, a lot of great things can happen. I put on a mask to represent the faceless children who have been displaced from their homes. Children are dying there. With violence escalating, schools have been forced to close as teachers and students were increasingly being targeted, kidnapped and even killed. What I've seen was quite scary actually. Over 70% of kids cannot go to school anymore because of the conflict, which means they are losing education. I was in junior secondary one. The military came into our house. We left from Mamfe to Bisonghabang and we ran into the bushes. We walked for two days. We arrived on Sunday, the 9th of September, 2018. As a child of a slave, you grow up thinking that slavery is a normal thing. In 2020, for the first time, the government of Cameroon initiated negotiations to bring about a ceasefire. But there remain unresolved issues on all sides to make way for people to go back home. Nobody should go through that. It was very overwhelming. The best thing about taking part is the thought and accomplishment that some people will be helped by our small contribution.
incredible photographs. And thank you to those young people who shared with us the stories. Now, do you know what cryptocurrency is? It's all over the news and social media lately. And one school in Nigeria is now even accepting it as payment for school fees. But how does it work? Here's Keishan Kule to explain. Simply put, cryptocurrency is digital money. Unlike traditional money, it isn't kept in banks or printed at a mint. Instead, it's all online with every transaction stored in a database called a blockchain. Which is a group of connected computers that keep a record of every time someone sends or receives crypto. Digital money has been around for a while but Bitcoin is considered the original cryptocurrency, founded in 2009 by a programmer or possibly a group of programmers under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. But there are other types of cryptocurrency. Just like paper money, Cryptocurrency can be used to buy goods and services, as long as the seller is willing to accept it. It's become a popular way for young people to raise money in support of causes they believe in. Like in Nigeria last year, when organizers of the hashtag NSAS protest collected donations in crypto, protecting the funds from being seized by the government. Because crypto transactions can't be traced by authorities, there is a fear that they might be used for criminal activities, like to pay for drugs or weapons. And although a lot of people are clamoring to own crypto, there is a risk that they could lose their value or be hacked and stolen. This is because they're unregulated, which means there are no laws protecting people who choose to invest in them. Then there is the environmental impact. Mining, the process by which new cryptocurrencies are added into the blockchain database, use a lot of energy. There are now whole factories dedicated to mining cryptocurrency, with thousands of computers working round the clock to keep the blockchain running. Some people say cryptocurrency is the future of money. And if what we've seen in places like music or TV and film are anything to go by, then this isn't necessarily a wrong assumption. But there will probably have to be some policies put in place to make sure it's safe and fair for everyone to use before that happens. We know you guys love asking the big questions to find out more about the world around us. And over the last year, Health has become an even more important issue to everyone, young and old. So this week, you sent us your biggest health questions. And we've got BBC Africa's health correspondent, Kadidiatu, to give you the answers. How did HIV, AIDS, coronavirus, how did they come about? Where did they, where did they come from? That's a $1 billion question. Just like you, there are at least thousands of scientists around the world who are trying to find the actual origins of COVID-19 and HIV. All that we know for now is that HIV probably first appeared in West and Central Africa be between 1884 and 1924, and that COVID-19 appeared in China at the end of 2019. There are lots of hypotheses, but none of them are considered as the one true answer. Surely this will require more time, and who knows, you might be the next scientist who will find those answers. Why do doctors charge so much money to treat us? I like to think that every doctor's main goal is to heal as many patients as possible, but what we should also remember is that managing a healthcare facility is a bit similar to managing a business. There are lots of expenses, for example, the doctor's time, medical supplies or medication. The money you pay is actually a contribution to creating the best environment possible for the best healthcare possible. Why do hospitals don't have 
enough equipment to treat us. Medical equipment is very expensive and in some poor countries it takes extra time and effort for authorities to buy them while still respecting their budget and other priorities. Also sometimes in addition to the equipment, authorities have to pay for medical staff training so that they are able to provide suitable healthcare services with that equipment. Are movies correct to suggest there is a need vaccine? Don't trust everything you see on television, especially if it's fiction. Trust facts and reliable scientific sources. Unfortunately, humanity has yet to develop a vaccine against, against HIV. It doesn't exist yet. It is true that HIV has existed for over a century now, and you are not the only one the only person that is wondering why um, there's no vaccine yet. This is an old and complex condition, but let's remain hopeful and believe that scientists will solve this mystery. Now, there is a lot of us out there who want to help the environment, so we recycle. But did you know that some of that effort may be wasted? Because not everything can be recycled. Here's Vic to explain. Do you have a bit of the save the world in you? Do you try to do your part to minimize your carbon footprint because you recognize that the earth might be in trouble? Maybe you sort out your trash into plastic, paper and cardboard, but is this enough? Here's where the concept of wish cycling comes in, where we dispose of waste in the hope that it will be recycled, but unfortunately, it just can't be. Sure, that plastic bottle may have the three recognizable arrows, which means that it can be recycled, but is it recyclable in your area? Or maybe something like old umbrellas. No area can recycle that because it's unrecyclable. So let's take a look at what can and what can't be recycled. On the recyclable list, we have things like cardboard, steel cans, aluminium cans, or is it aluminum, and some kinds of glass bottles. With paper, white papers and phone books can be recycled, but papers that have been waxed, such as cards, cannot. Things like oil never actually go bad, just dirty. So if you can clean them, you can reuse them. In Africa, only South Africa and Egypt have the capacity to recycle oils, lubricants, and greases. Other items that can't be recycled at all include disposable diapers, some kinds of takeaway coffee cups, and I can't believe it has to be said, but dead animals. And it's not just about knowing what can and can't be recycled. What you recycle also needs to be clean or it will compromise the quality of the product it's recycled into. So remember to scrape out the bottoms of those jars before you throw them out. The country currently topping the ranks as the best recycler in the world is Germany, which recycles 66.1% of its waste. Smaller nations often have no recycling capacity, so you'll find places like Liechtenstein or Cape Verde, which recycle at 0%, partly because they're so small and also because they have no recycling infrastructure. So they end up exporting their trash for recycling in other places. Numbers for Africa are hard to come by just because recycling is mostly driven by the informal sector, but the United Nations reckons that Africa as a whole recycles about 4% of its waste. So, if you're keen to do your bits and keep your waste out of landfills, you can find out what can and can't be recycled in your area. And of course, if you really want to avoid waste cycling, your best bet is to limit the amount of waste you generate in the first place. And our final guest is a rapper from Morocco who goes by the name of Suha. Nora caught up with her to find out how she'd been fighting for women's rights in such a male-dominated industry. Hi, 
I think it's uh, my my duty to to talk about about women, especially in my music, uh, to defend the, the women rights in Morocco, because the place for women in the society is not really as it should be. Rap music may not have the best reputation when it comes to gender equality, but more and more female rap artists like Suha are using their talent to empower women. Since I was a kid, I was dreaming of being like a singer. I started with, with everyone like uh, classic music and then hip hop, R and B. But I, what I like the most is the rap music because we can express through it a lot of uh, feelings, a lot of opinions. We can talk about subjects that are taboo in the society in general. So it was for me like the way to express myself and be true to myself. 80% of Moroccan women aged between 15 to 74 have experienced domestic violence. Suha is fighting the injustice women face through rap. A lot of women, they, they are like, they have been experienced uh, violence or harassment or such thing. But I see really a lot of, diff a lot of changes through the years because there is in the law changes for the women, for the women's rights, but it's still not enough, you know. As a female rapper, have you faced any obstacles? Yeah, I mean, as female people don't take you seriously, especially in the rap music, because it's a man industry general, on, in general in Morocco. But uh, like there's a lot of girls right now, good rappers, they have, they have uh, really good songs. So the public start to listen to us and like have uh, confidence. And one day, in one day, the public will see that we, we can be talented as men and we can do even uh, hit songs better than men, than the rappers. Why do you think there are more female rappers nowadays compared to about, say, 10 years ago, when there were hardly any female rappers? The industry has de developed through the years, and now we see like more and more women like, have the courage and the confidence to, to do rap music and express themselves through this music. It's, it's the woman, the woman they have to stand for their right to and have the courage to like do, have their own, uh, their own opinion, make their own choice without being afraid of anyone, not family, not society, anything. Yes, girl power. That's all from the BBC What's New team this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye.